10, 9, ignition sequence starts, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. Modern human cultural complexity is primarily the result of incremental changes that have occurred since we most last shared in common ancestral chimpanzee. Okay, delete that. <laughs> just start over. No. Start over. No. I can't read. No, <laughs> you want to just keep going? going? Keep okay. Going. No. Approximately six million years ago, we are fortunate to have our, at our disposal a wealth of skeletal and fossil remains, as well as a larger sample of tools and other materials left behind in our human ancestors. However, because we are st- Stuck moving along at seemingly a linear path through time, our view of the future remains shrouded in ambiguity. Nonetheless, if reports of close encounters with UFOs and aliens can be understood as instances of intertemporal interaction, this could potentially offer up a wealth of information about the future state of our species. It's September 3rd, 2022, and that, an excerpt from Identified Flying Objects, Us in the Future. I'm Doug. Welcome to Dr. Bill again. Holy crap, that was difficult. <laughs> Good job. I can't read. <laughs> Good job. Your, your, your literary I'm skills talking. are improving <laughs> dramatically. So this is, this is the book by... Um, this yeah, is, this is the book by, what is his name? It is uh, Dr. Michael P. Masters. Okay. And Dr. Masters shares my outlook that UFO or extraterrestrials and UFOs are us from the future. When um, I think that's a worthy, I know we don't necessarily share that view, but <laughs> that's what I think. I, I, and, have, um, I have no opinion at this point because I don't have enough data. Data. Um, Data. So there's uh, like Jacques Vallée, I think, and others that have been involved in this stuff for decades think that it might be interdimensional. UFOs might be interdimensional. And then another train of thought is that UFOs are time travelers from the future. Human time travelers. Yes, and that's what I... Okay. That's, that's your. That's you, you know, it's they. Well, you know, let's talk. We're going to talk about Roswell to kick off here, but I mean, these could be us, or these could be, you know, something that they send through time because the actual humans, you know, actual yeah. humans may be affected by the time travel experience. Like, yes. you know, you can't have clothing on <laughs> because <laughs> like in Terminator. You go in, <laughs> or something <laughs> yes or some other physical happening i don't know i i have i'm like you i don't have any proof but we don't have any proof I, of anything no, do, what yeah. do we have proof of bill um, do we have proof we, we do have proof it's... that ufos well he calls them ifos and you know identify and i didn't even pick it up off the you know off the title of the book he and inter you know what he called whatever that word was he calls them intradimensional uh, or, or intertemporal inter- inter-tempor- temporal travel they're, they're not extraterrestrials he calls them intertemporal visitors which means you know they're from the future so you you and, were saying uh, they're this visiting was, us you were saying that this was a bit of a heavy read is it still hard that's going? an that that's an that's an example <laughs> that was I, tr- I tried to find an excerpt that would kind of get to what it is that it's leading yeah it is kind of a heavy read it's like a okay. kind of like a textbook but i am i'm i'm trudging yeah. through it slowly powering and on. i'll Power, i'll, I'll, give, I'll give powering through it i don't okay. necessarily um recommend the book i recommend the, the um the you know the ideas the theory the theory that that's what it could be because I agree with it, and I'm kind of wondering. Okay, he thinks like I do. He's basically just saying the same thing. Oh, we've been saying could be the possibility is that you know we've evolved, and that's just our further. That's what evolution is going to be. Not you know, he's, we're talking a hundred thousand years, but I think it's much more than a hundred thousand years in the future because yeah, yeah, 
Where what what's it what's the age of the earth like 3.8 billion or something it's you know, the more than that it's at least four four and a half billion i think yeah the solar system so, so. you know but life or the as earth. we know it didn't evolve like but it came from something yes. the religious people aren't going to really agree with that but um well, the fine. it might not necessarily adam and eve yeah. and the snake and the apple and everything but um you know, well, it's just yeah, there's, it's a theory. I mean, there's a um, speaking of religion. Um, there's a the. Well, it's almost there's Sunday, the cult. There's the modern cult of atheism. This is going to upset some people. Agnosticism <laughs> or atheism, and we were not going to be able to. We're not going to be able to advertise this episode. We're going to have. We're going to have. <laughs> it'll be sensitive events again. Here we go. Oh yeah, um, the last two have been. I'm, I'm on a roll. I got two a row, two in a row. That yeah, Google denied. is like Google goggle. It's not pronounced goggle. It's go <laughs> Google. It's goggle. Goggle is saying that uh, this uh, are the their sensitive the, events. Two <laughs> delicate people do not listen. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. I think it's sort of, there's like a cult of atheists and, and agnostics, which is fine. But I just was, re I saw something the other day that reminded me of, I had an economics professor and he, a Mexican economics professor, which. Um, does that matter, Bill? It does, because it, it speaks, <laughs> it speaks to California. It's like, we, we talk about. Uh, oh, was it in California? It was in California. It was a Mexican okay. economics guy. It was awesome. And, um, he, um, he said there was three components to being human and one was spiritual, physical, and mental. And if you look in anthropology, you look at, look at stuff, anthropological, every society in the history of the planet always had a spiritual component to it. So I wonder about agnosticism and atheism because I think it's trying to erase, um, I don't know, because I don't study those things. Uh, trying to erase a critical component of what it means to be human. But you maybe that's the, that. maybe that that's the plan. something you study. Yes, I'm not going to say, well, let me learn about agnosticism and atheism. Yeah, I don't know, what's, what's there, what's there to learn? The, now you read, wait, now you, told, didn't you start to read the Bible cover to cover? I am, Did you ever make it? No, I'm reading it as part of my ongoing classical education. So it's, I'm following, it I'm following. Book? It's a history book though, right? Seems to be, yeah. Yeah, but I'm following um, I'm following a um, syllabus for a classical education of you know hundred something years ago, and part of that is actually reading chapters from the Bible, which I've never done. I'm also I'm currently reading um, Homer's Iliad Odyssey. or the Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. I've read the Iliad and I'm reading the Odyssey right now. And Very then, good. How and then, how is it? Don't tell me the end. Um, well, he, he, he finds his way home. Um, it's good. The translation I have is really good. Um, yeah. Great. I'm really, I mean, I'm shocked that I'm enjoying it. I can oh, see being forced to read this when you're like 10 years old or 15 or something. I just read uh, Kidnapped by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. Oh, yeah. And that's a great book. And that's a hundred and... 50 years old or something like that. Yeah. And I read, yeah. um, I read Treasure Island. The Ast I've read that. Well, I didn't read that. I read the, the comic, like the comic. Yeah. The, compressed, the kind of the comic. Compressed it's, it's, comic they're not long them. books to begin with. And, uh, yeah. Treasure Island, I read it. It was great. I got a nice illustrated one, one of the original, um, illustrators for it. So it's got like a hundred pictures in it. And then, oh, cool. yeah, that's, that's very cool. And the um, kidnapped, the same thing, had like a hundred illustrations to go with the story. And they're not long books, but they're great. I'm like, I've, I was like, why would, why weren't we handed these when we were kids? So yeah, it would have been interesting because we were reading, you know, science fiction. You know, we, we you but, know, the City of Golden Lead by John yeah, Christopher. Great you books. read those books, great books. Right? Yeah, we all read them. Great books. Um, Did you ever see the movie? They had a movie. About no, I, 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 we talked about they it. They literally I, had it, and it was horrible. Yeah, they <laughs> it do was that. horrible. 
I was I so excited when I'm like, oh my god, they made a movie out of this, and went, oh, this did is they? Those did the people that made it have to remake it in their own image? I'm I'm smarter. Yeah. I'm smarter than the uh, writer and the 50 billion people that have read the book and enjoyed it. I'm gonna redo it so it's better because I'm with smart. Hmm? With proper CGI, that would have been that could be a great story if you think about the it's story still, of the White it's, Mountains. It's still a great story, and they could still do it. And it's well, uh, another book, yeah. a great book is um, oh, what's the name of it? Oh, it's a time travel book, sort of. Did oh, we read it as kids? Yeah, we did. I can't remember. Madeline. Oh yeah, the angle, a wrinkle that... in time. Yeah, that's a great book. And Disney has made Disney made a movie of that recently. It was absolutely awful. And it's like, look, yeah. look, people love. They don't seem to know this. People love the book. It's like Dune. Yeah. Uh, people love the book. Make, I read the whole series. Make the movie awesome. like the book, and you will did, make lots and lots and lots of money. And did you like, like the Did you like Dune? The written, not the latest one, but the first one. Did um, you like that? With uh, with um, who, Precious Faye. Faye. There was elements of that <laughs> were awesome, and I really looked forward to seeing it. But they, it was bizarre. They screwed it up. You know what I didn't like about it was this, in, <clears throat> the interior of the spacecraft was like this turn of the century or Henry the Eighth or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> looking. Well, they, they, were, they, they had. You some... know, it was like, what is this? <laughs> but yeah, you know, we, we talked about it before. It's like the they read some of the first book and then they got lazy and said, okay, this is too thick. It's too hard to read. And then they read like the second book, which is like this really thin Dune book. And then incorporated was, those two. And it's like, why? Did they, is, I don't remember the interior of the spacecraft being like that. They didn't really describe it in the book. Yeah, anything, so they, I don't so know where they came up with that you know it's design issues colonial it's like colonial whatever so yeah they're just doing um uh, yeah we have to do it our way we're making it better because we're smart and yeah. we're gonna make and it better we know what we're doing we don't understand why it didn't make no money well you know it's like could you imagine them t what would have happened to harry potter if they took the harry potter books and completely changed them nobody would go see yeah. those movies no one would care yeah. They did well with that, though. That was cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was J.K. Rowling, who's apparently an evil person now because of bad think. Uh, she... Um, what did she do? She said... She <laughs> what said, did she do? She, she said, talk I, about? I can't, or... I can't talk about it because it will cause problems. We're already done with what no, we talked about before, no, I so I won't I be trying to advertise about. this episode either. I can't talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to get... You talked I don't about want to be sent... I don't evolution. Want to be, I don't We're want to talking be sent, about evolution. I don't want to be sent away... I mean, it's, after our president it, gave his his speech, I'm afraid that they're going to send me away. It can't happen. Yeah, I'm not going to talk gonna about go it. To, yeah, you're going to go. They send me send me to that special place where they will teach me to think properly. Yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. I won't even start talking about that and just dig deeper. Dig <laughs> deeper. Dig your yeah, hole deeper. Just, well, you know, I was talking at work about how, you know, I'm adopted and, you know, found my, did my genealogy and my dad said I was Scottish and I turned out I'm 50% <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> and it's, everybody got like the weird look on their face, like, uh oh. <laughs> oh, at your work? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Jewish. We're, we're working with one of these guys. Well, look at my nose. I mean, look we're at working, my nose. We're working with one of these guys. We're with, because no wonder he cares about money so much. So yeah, it's uh, well. You know why? Um, you know why your nose is so big, right? Because I'm Jewish. Air's free, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's an old joke. It's a good one. Is it really? Yeah. I never. Oh, it's an old uh, joke. Is that why the Jew is that a Jewish joke? It is. It's an old one. <laughs> that's actually pretty good. It is. It's a good joke. Hey, so let's actually do what we're here to do and instead of Roswell. Let's, about let's start shit. with Roswell <laughs> Final Verdict Three. So which which is awesome. I, I know you didn't like again, I'll say. I know you didn't like it. I or am saying start that with. I, to start with, I watched the first one. I wasn't impressed with it. And I have to say they're doing a nice job of laying out the time and the events of Roswell. The AI, than, the AI stuff is just a gimmick. 
but they're telling yeah, they're telling a good job on the story and the people involved and the witnesses and then they throw it in and we did ai excuse me and they said they're they're it's true or it's false yeah um it i don't know if i buy into that i mean it's it is good and it's as good as i didn't understand i did understand the story obviously the overview of this but they're they're getting every detail of and then people's because we always say well we're never going to know because they're dead <laughs> oh you mean whether they're, they're, they're whether they're telling gonna, the truth or not yeah but they yeah. yeah but they have the video like marcel like you know the marcel video of him talking about it and when he was older when he was old before he died Ourself. And then they, they, you know, they said that, it, you know, he said he saw all the debris and it's, you know, it's just amazing that they're able to, you know, but I don't, the second, like you talked about last week, you know, when you talk about the daughter of the guy, the mortician or the daughter of, you know, whoever, that's true. Well, that's true because they, they believe, believe the story was they true. believe he told the truth to them. So they're yeah. not, they believe it's true. The uh, validity of that is not there in my... I'm surprised that they're hanging their hat on this. They should find the old videos of the actual people and just leave it at that because that kind of makes it look shady well, to me. A lot of these videos are out there. They're on the, um, at the National... They're on Ar the internet. They're the all, National yeah, Archive has, has put many of these interviews on the, the internet because they think it has a historical significance. Well, at least they're out there, you know, and, it's, and the government's like, yeah, they don't prove anything, that doesn't prove anything, but it's kind of, fr I mean, as especially as this episode went along, it's kind of frightening. I mean, this was, this one kind of took place seven days after the, after yeah. the crash. Oh, this, and there, you know. this is the investigation of the second crash site, which is supposed to be a semi-intact saucer with, yeah. with bodies. Yeah. And, and they the were, bodies. you know, the going through the different people and, and like interviews with their kids like this one guy was uh sergeant melvin brown k squad 509th composite composite bomb group which is a nuclear bomb group i like it in the show they were going yeah the security at the base was um was increased because of the crash you know it's a nuclear bomb group yeah. i think they're going to have extremely high security at the base anyway how much higher can you go than protect the nuclear weapons level so it's like yeah they increased it i'm jumping ahead a little bit on it it's the mortician said he got on the post yep and the story with him is they he said he brought on an airman that was injured and then they decided nope that was false and then they said he probably had a girlfriend nurse on the base and he's probably also married there was a uh, having an affair i don't know there was a i've seen something else about him knowing a nurse on the base and he yeah. was he was like the local ambulance guy, so I can believe that he could drive the ambulance right onto the base. Is that how he? Now that's the second point I was trying to make. Is that how does he just get on the base? He's the I local. Mean, everyone knows he's the the people know he's the ambulance guy, and if he's pulling in with the ambulance, and like he said, it made sense. I don't think he was lying. It made sense to get on the base if they're they're under restricted. Yeah. Whatever. That uh, if he was bringing a pace, an injured airman into the base, he would have. They would have drove him right in. He would have went right in, went right to the hospital, and could. And once he's on, the, once, you know what it's. We know what it's like. Once you yeah. get through the gate yeah. on the base, you're you can pretty much wander you're around in. anywhere. Yeah, because they know once you you've already been screened. Yeah. Uh, so they're not. Uh, it's not. It's not like. Well, they probably had layers of of uh, stuff at the base because it's like they want you near the nuclear weapons. Yeah. But, well, I mean, I got on a uh, Travis, Steve and I, you know, because he used to live down by Travis. And I remember one time we went to the, we went to the guard, we went through the gate, we went to the gate. And at the time I had a, I had, I had a newer Dodge truck, the mm -hmm. black truck. They just, and waved, they just waved They waved us through. Yeah. They just, because well, that's what they were driving those days, you know, yeah. there was no marking on it at all. But the guy, just, the airman, just waved us through. Man, we drove. We ended up driving across the runway right when a C five was coming in. Oh shit! <laughs> I mean, they let us go anywhere. It was bizarre. Nowadays, yeah, I, that I used to go over. 
I used to go over to the air station because I could go over to the PX there and um, you know, just drive drive up to the gate and just show my ID and they just wave yeah. you through. But then yeah, they, I was in they there changed it. They changed it where you had to actually go into the office. I mean, yeah. I can't remember what year it was, but something had happened, like some sort of events or something. And then you had to go up to the guard, you know, the office, and then you had to get a pass to drive, you know. And it was it was straightforward, but it was just like it's like, you know, yeah. And nothing's gonna happen. Nothing ever happens there. So a sleepy, never... sleepy air base that they're slowly winding down. Is that Alameda Naval Air? Yeah, Is it yeah. That one. I'm not even sure they had any airplanes there at the time. I think I'm not. I think it was just basically, you know, housing. I actually went to the. Uh, I went and had dinner in the officers' club just before they shut down the, um, the entire facility. Oh so, really? Yeah. How was it? Yeah, it's decent. I mean, it's it had that like World War II vibe, so it was cool to go in there and eat. So it was. I did. Like, my my dad probably ate there. Yeah, sure. Sat in his chair. Yeah, um, right in his chair. Yeah. My my mom my my mom was probably there with him yeah, having dinner. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably in the club officers club. Some cocktails. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I went there yeah. and had um, just before they shut down, they had opened up the um, uh, dining hall. Officers club was open to the public for like a week or something before they shut the place down. So I just went over there and and grabbed dinner. You know, look around, yeah. look at the paintings and the exhibits and, and, um, had a nice, not dinner, I had lunch, I had a nice lunch and, you know, sort of a trip down nostalgia lane. You could drive around the base and look at, look at the stuff. My mom and sister moved into officer's housing there. Really? Yeah. Cause they shut down the, uh, they turned it into uh, housing available to people and yeah. they actually rented a two story house in officer country. No way. Yeah, yeah. When I was living in Oakland, I used to drive over there um, Sundays. I'd go over to um, take the kid, who was tiny, go to Wiener Schnitzel, which is my favorite restaurant, and then we'd get something. Then we'd park at the uh, ferry lot, and we'd eat our food, and then I'd drive onto the base, which was open at that point, and drive over to my mom's house so he could play with his cousins. So... No way. Yeah, yeah. And and there were right across the house was a you had to go around because there was a fence, but there was a gate in the fence. And my mom used to ride the ferry to work in San Francisco. And the ferry thing was right there. She'd basically walk out of the front door of the house, go through the little gate in the fence, walk to the ferry terminal and uh ride the ferry to downtown Oak, San Francisco. It was awesome. How old were you, how old were you when they were doing this? Uh this was night uh two thousand. 2001 2002 oh i didn't know she lived did she move out of your place yeah up yeah yeah she was living in our uh, they all they all yeah got rid of that place and they they uh rented a nice two-story house in officer country on uh the air base nice houses yeah yeah, yeah it was awesome all that. Oh. yeah it was beautiful so it was That's really amazing. cool to go over there and we did uh we did some barbecues and stuff and and uh i even took a course in san francisco and and uh, went over there and would park and ride the ferry with my mom when she got, went to work. And then at the end of the course, I'd meet her and we'd ride the ferry back. It was... Uh, That's awesome. It was funny because I remember we coming back and the ferry boat's coming in. And um, uh, my kids' cousins would wait and watch for the boat, the ferry boat. And so I just remember um, Andrew, the younger cousin, was running... Um, wearing a panda suit <laughs> across the lawn. He was a little guy. He's wearing this panda oh, suit. Yeah. And he's running along, you know, to greet the greet the ferry. And it's like his mom is like running after him because he's like, you know, don't want him to run out into the the escape. Yeah, it's hysterical. I'm looking at this, looking at watching, looking at the house and just seeing this panda running, you know, <laughs> running around with my Maybe. sister chasing him. So. So Sergeant Brown, he uh, he was one that was in the back of the trans the truck, right? That looked at the yep. um the and they aliens were told, and they, told him not they, look, do not look under the tarp. Do not, yeah. Don't it, we wouldn't look under it. Yeah, you know, I would have been, been <laughs> taking pictures with my cell phone. Oh <laughs> god! Pictures. Yeah, and they well he went he got he fled to Britain. 
Yeah, you know, that's they, what they said. But you know, I mean, that's who knows. Yeah, I was, really said happened. he was so transmorgified uh, by what he'd seen. I don't well, know. They, I they, mean, they they talked to his daughter Beverly Bean. Bean. And, her statement scene about her father related, seeing the she related to Mister 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 Bean. Scene Bean. They, <laughs> he was married to Mister Bean, and she uh, her her statement about her father's statements about seeing the uh, extraterrestrials, um, the intertemporals or whatever. <laughs> intertemporal. <laughs> See, it temporal. was it was true. <laughs> we could call them intertemporal. Yeah, now. yeah, intertemporal. Yeah. So yeah, he he gave the standard description with a big head, slanted eyes, big eyes, little nose, tiny mouth. You know, they always make them kind of gray. You know, they're gray. Yeah, we're all. Did you ever see that? Uh, we're all gonna lose South our Park episode. Did you ever see that South Park episode of that they came in from the the time travel UFO? I think it was even, and it arrived on Earth and the. People from the future came up, came up, and they were all beige. They were all the same color. Like, oh yeah, there was a <laughs> um, oh there was a book by um, Ursula K. Le Guin. I can't remember what the the thing is. They also made an uh, NPR National Public Radio made a uh, series out of it, and the end. Oh really. Yeah, the end thing at the ending of the book and the movie or the series, can't remember the title of the book, was everybody was turned gray to get rid yeah. of, you know, all the racial stuff. So everybody at the end yeah. of the, the thing was gray. So. Well, yeah, the insinuation is that we, because we all did our thing together, that it all eventually We're just all, ended up one color. Did our thing together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> did our thing that's what that's what my stepmom used to say you're doing your thing doing your thing <laughs> doing your th what are you doing in there you're doing your thing. <laughs> yeah so he um he said he was traumatized his daughter says he was traumatized and he'd seen things and i guess it smelled too now the smell i like the the part where they're saying that it was really bad smell that's interesting and that sort of adds a a degree of verisimilitude, truth to it. What's uh, a word? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. What? You okay? Uh, what? Yeah. I've the, never uh, heard that word what? before. <laughs> Shut up. The, uh, so <laughs> anyway, so the, the guy, First Lieutenant Walter Hout was, wrote a press release and then he also dropped it off at the, this is the thing this is one of my favorite stories that I've I've read this in the um, first Roswell book that that we read and the uh the guy dropped a press release off at um the newspaper oh, and then they go in the oval office truman says shut it down which there's no proof for that yeah um but then, then he sent the two men men in black <laughs> he was chasing them on foot He's in a yeah, jeep and I mean, they're chasing that's, that's him on all, foot. That's all dramatization. And then um, yep. Matt Brazil was hiding out at uh, Walt Whitmore's office. And they're like, did, yep. did Walt Whitmore rat out Matt Brazil so the men in black or whoever the military could find him? I guess they, they did. that's sort of scary that they, if, that they took him into custody and sort of like threatened him to shut him up. But that's, yeah. that actually bothers me because he just saw the debris field. It wasn't like he saw the other part, which they talk about right. with the other crash site. Yeah, but he, t the but thing his son, is, he his, saw the debris field and yeah. he, I mean, it was, he knows the story. So he's yeah. like trying to shut everybody out, yeah. down. Yeah. So that, yeah. The Truman wanted everybody shut down. So they grabbed everybody. And threaten them with being thrown in jail. They didn't threaten to kill them. Well, they did threaten. Yeah. You'll find your bones. Find in your the bones desert. in the desert. They'll find your bones in the desert. You know, and that was true, of course. So but, his, his um, son went went through that, and his neighbor supported that. But and, you know, or they'd throw you in jail for your for life, kind of thing. You know, yeah. which I mean, that's where all those stories come from. Where you know, don't ever cross the government because you know, just be hey, put away. Hey. Hey, they do it now. They still do it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Only if you're still in the reserves. But, yeah. <laughs> that guy from last week. Now, Corporal Maher, whatever his name was. You're still in the reserves. Yeah, we're going to send you somewhere special. Yeah, and yeah. then then give you COVID and you're done. Well, at that, I don't know if um, 19, I think he said that was 1957. So he still, it, I th- Korea was over, but they could still send you some someplace Oh, horror, they, horrible. No, they could send you somewhere state they just send you somewhere and yeah, yeah we're gonna you. send you to we're they'll gonna, suicide you yeah well yeah. yeah they don't have to do that they're gonna go you're doing you're gonna send you to the far north of alaska or someplace or yeah. somewhere well they want to be rid of you where you're never going to come back that's the problem i mean they're not gonna if it's that bad it, i think it would be that, that bad that bad you can't keep oh your yeah. Mouth shut. yeah yeah you well know? i mean we um I mean, you, you go into the older stuff, you see like the JFK conspiracy, conspiracy theory, uh, the JFK conspiracy, which is not a theory. Um, they were willing to people, governments, government affiliates were willing to do absolutely awful things to people to keep things, you know, keep things the way they've always been or way they want them to be in the future. Um, yeah. So Glenn Davis, Dennis was the mortician. Oh yeah, they asked him for um, for coffins, for tiny coffins. We need some tiny coffins. Yeah, yeah well, I can get four foot, but I could also special order some three foot. Six. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then uh, then I'm not sure I really understood what was going on with this. They had the uh, John. Oh, John. Oh, this was this is my favorite part of this whole sort of Roswell story is this reporter, John McBoyle, reporter for KOAT Radio in Al- Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was pursuing these stories and he submitted a story to um, the news station to Linda Sleepy. And she put it on, she put it on the teletype and the teletype got shut down. Sleepy. Slept yeah, in. as she was doing it, then, yeah, then it yeah. said, this yeah. is the FBI yeah. discontinued the transmitting yeah. of this. Yeah, That is scary. So they're saying, and then they're going, and just after this, they're saying Truman signed the security National Security Act, which created the CIA. And the men in black. Men in black. Men in black. Well, they're suggesting in the show that the men in black are already in existence. So there's some sort of, maybe yeah, they were OSS. Which was the oh, organization before the old CIA? Yeah, yeah. So they're going. So this they they got all excited on the show and they go. This is shows that there's deep level media monitoring, which I don't believe that happens. That's a conspiracy theory. You don't believe that? There's ever no happens. no media monitoring. Media? What about finding people? You know, in in usual ways like cell phones and things these days. <laughs> no, that's not media. Or what? What? I can't remember. This what stupid, could happen? What's the stupid ter- term that they're using? Um, uh, what I say? Uh, I want to say significant events. Oh, the one we that were excommunicated yeah, yeah, they, on. Yeah, they keep yeah, saying we're what, sensitive like, events. Sensitive. Oh, sensitive, sensitive events. events. Sensitive, sensitive events. Stay away from the sensitive the- events. You can kiss this episode goodbye from that yeah. too. <laughs> Stop saying sensitive events. Uh, so we anyway, can't talk about what are we going to talk about? Insensitive events. So then I could talk about insensitive events. Dennis went to the ba- base. They said he was lying about the girl or something, or the airman to the base. But I mean, because makes, he had his girlfriend. Well, they surmise that he had a yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. nurse. Yeah. Well, he's. But, it's yeah. known that he knew a nurse on the base, and there's Which, there's they're filling in the blank when it says that he says it's false but i i can't if they're having a security lockdown at the base there's i mean this is like right out of a a world war ii movie or something like that or whatever a movie where it's like how do you how do you get into the secure location you you have a or mission impossible you have an ambulance with somebody injured and you can get anywhere yeah it just it makes too much sense that he actually had the ambulance with an injured airman in it to get on the base. All right, he may not even had to have an injured airman. He probably just drive up to the base with the lights on and just say, "I got a guy in back. I need to get him in the hospital right now." And they just open the gate. 
So yeah, I don't know. That's how he gets in, I guess, is he's got his ambulance. He yeah, he got in because of the ambulance. I'd say it's <laughs> more likely. Lights on. Yeah, if he's lying, I'd say it's more likely that he just didn't have anyone in the ambulance. He just drove in and said he did. What are they going to open up? All right, open up. We got to inspect the body, the injured guy, to make sure he's really injured. So that might yeah. have been. That's more plausible than them saying, "Well, you know, he was having an affair with the nurse." Well, you know, he that that nurse, the connection with the nurse and him has been was established a long time ago. So he did know a nurse at yeah, the no. uh, at the base. Well, you saw the one that busted out of the room. That busted, you know, she was in with the aliens, I guess, and. Well, the extra temporals, the extra temporal, <laughs> and then she—it was then he smelled that horrible smell. Well, I would actually—I agree. What makes, interesting. What makes more sense to me? Well, he apparently has been interviewed a lot, so we could actually go and look at his interviews if we can find him. It yeah. makes more sense to me that if he knew this nurse, he was like looking for her. So if he's wandering around going, "Where's nurse so and so?" and they say, "Oh, yeah. she's in hangar eighty-four, she's over there." So yeah. he's like, um, you know, he's in a uniform, he's the ambulance guy, everybody knows him. Um, and they say, yeah, it'd be easy for him to wander around and say, I'm looking for nurse so-and-so. And then once he finds the room she's in, and then it's like, what are you doing here? Yeah, so, that was her, I thought. I, I kind of thought. That, that was the implication. Was, yeah, that was. And then I thought I saw somewhere where they met later in a bar. And maybe it's not this mm -hmm. show. But That's they another, met later to talk about it. Some nurse met with somebody and was talking about yeah, the experiences at, at the base. Yeah. So that was in another type episode. We need to do um, a deep, deep dive through these Roswell books. And I don't know. I don't know if we'll manage that because it's like the information. There's so much information. There's... Yeah. Uh, I, got, I got a book behind me by... Um, this, the Smithsonian put out. There's three books written by, um, you know, three prominent books on Roswell that were written in the 80s and 90s. There's uh, two 300-page reports put out by the Air Force saying how you know Roswell didn't happen. So I mean, it's just it's an enormous amount of work just to do a serious deep dive through this stuff. But it's something to think about for the future. Yeah. For for our for our retirement. Where we can sit around and go, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. spend the next six months analyzing everything I can find on Roswell, and then we're gonna come out. We're gonna talk about the same thing, the same shit. <laughs> yeah. We just saw this stuff. We've been talking about this stuff for years. Yeah, Redheaded captain stuff. came up to the mortician, says, "You didn't see anything. Don't talk about it. I'll be picking your bones out of the sand." Yeah. So, so Roswell. Final verdict number three. How it's you... good. Continues to be good. I definitely recommend like it? it for anybody who's if, you know interested in if the you can subject. Find it. It's disappeared, hasn't it? Yeah, you sent me the episode. I don't know. It's on. It is on. It's it's okay. It's listed on Amazon, but when you you can't click on it, it doesn't play. So I don't. Well, I don't know. It's, it's curious about that. Do do we know too much? Yes, you found some. I sent you some secret links. Yeah, through um, with the, with Microsoft the Russian Bing, link. Russian Russian links. I don't know what they are. It's Microsoft Bing that come right up, and uh, but it's not all the episodes. The last one's missing. Oh, dun dun dun. <laughs> so anyway, know. but we can still go cool. through at least two more. And I uh, yeah, I think it's decent. It's decent. They're doing a good job. They're it's a dramatization, and then they throw in the AI gimmicky thing, uh, but it's not bad. Not bad. If you don't know anything about Roswell, it's a good show to to watch if it's you can find it since it's disappeared from all the the of sites Art. available to us except for Bing. So, It'll be back because it was prominent on what was it? Uh, not Paramount. It was on History? Disco Plus. Dis was, oh, Discovery okay. Plus. Discovery Plus. It'll be back. So and Amazon may may update it so they can. It's all licensing, so they'll, or. Uh, Netflix is getting big on like UFO shows. I think they're just getting yeah. this, the leftovers from history and discovery and stuff like that. Is so, this closed? Is it a closed series? Like it's end when it ends, that's the end of it, or are they for this one? I think so. End? I don't think they've made any more, but I haven't. Well, I haven't really looked into it. I think this is it. Well, there's only so much, really. You can, I mean, <laughs> you can you can beat a dead horse. I mean, there's only so much you can talk about about this yeah you know. the it's an interesting story because of the accumulation of information over the years 
and all the witnesses, uh, I guess hundreds of people. You know, but then you have these, the, like the guy that came out and said his cousin was a man in black at, at Roswell. I don't know about that. Yeah. And the spinoffs. Uh, yeah. And then you have um, the, the, yeah, tons and tons of shows, but they're telling the same 15 facts over and over again. Even this one, the stuff that we're seeing. I think what we'll get, uh, I don't know. I got to, I, these books aren't hard to get through, not as hard as the book you're currently reading. And um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with Roswell in the future. But it's a uh, ongoing yeah, mis mystery. Good. So there is something, what I'm going to add to, and we, I'm going to just talk about this briefly. There was a couple of reports about um, Congress implying that UFOs have non-human origins. And this showed up in a couple... Um, couple different news sites i think the hill had one and then there was something else i pulled them all pulled them both but they um revised the definition of ufos to include transmedium which this is in the um intelligence i have to the draft of the bill for the oh, i can't read it it's bill for the intelligence services if i click on this this will blow things up oh, i didn't blow it up uh this is s4503 to authorize appropriations for fiscal year 2023 for intelligence and intelligence related activities of the united states government the intelligence community management account and the central intelligence agency retirement and disability system and for other purposes S45, or is it SB4503? It just says S4503 on this. Calendar number 433, 117th Congress second session. Interesting. In the Senate of the United States, July 12, 2022. Mr. Warner from the Select Committee on Intelligence reported the follow, following original bill, which was read twice and placed on the calendar. So this has gone through committee. Uh, it's been, it's on the calendar to be voted on so i don't know if it's been it's happened yet but they in this bill which is the authorization for the intelligence services funding for the intelligence services they've revised the definition for ufos as transmedium objects that can transition between space and the atmosphere or between atmosphere and bodies of water um why is that important I don't it's know. I wonder why I they would know. do that. I just, they're including it. Maybe it's... Uh, well, the mere fact that they're saying there's a UFO, I mean, they're even putting, do they say UFO or are they UAP or... It, well, you, they're we calling can probably it. see. The yeah. Uh, let's see. What do they say? What have I highlighted? It says temporary non-attributed objects are those that are positively identified as man-made after analysis will be passed to appropriate offices and should not be considered under the definition as unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena. It shouldn't be probably even say man-made. They should say, may have another term because they don't know what made it. <laughs> was it yeah, man? well, if it's been <laughs> identified, if it's, if it's, it's identified. Not, it's not natural, unnatural, maybe. <laughs> but it's identified, unnatural. they just say, um, they goes somewhere else so there's like special yeah. groupings that are supposed to focus on ufos uips but one of the things i saw in the bill when i was looking through it was if i can read it it was uh it's an appropriation evaluate links between unidentified aerospace phenomena as adversarial or foreign governments all right they want to make sure they're if they're foreign but one of the interesting things I saw was for the period of beginning on January, this is directly from the bill, for the period beginning on January 1, 1947 and ending on the date on which the Comptroller General completes activities under the subsection compile and term itemize a complete historical record of the intelligence community's involvement with unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena including successful or unsuccessful efforts to identify and track unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena and any intelligence community efforts to obfuscate, manipulate, 
public opinion, hide or otherwise provide unclassified or classified misinformation about the unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena or related activities based on a review conducted under paragraph one. Is this a step forward, do you think? Yeah, U I think it UFO, is. UFO, UAP, if, intertemporal, whatever they are. I think so. And I think what this is saying is that they want them, it's telling all these agencies to go into their records and find anything. Will they? they? Like you said, a lot of this has um, been destroyed. I mean, well, honestly. I think they will and they can, but yeah, a lot of these, these, uh, yeah. So I think it's like you don't know what's happened to any of the documents. Yeah, it's or like, the material. I yeah. mean, what about the materials? Where's the spaceships? Well, yeah. Where's did they bury the I mean, do they is it in formalda are all these beans in formaldehyde jars somewhere at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, which Jackie, you know, is Jackie still there. Gleason Jackie Gleason saw him with Nixon. Yeah, in Florida they were they saw him in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's at a, some air base down there. Yeah. I mean, but I think Wright Patterson is really the is really the mother load. I think I honestly, don't think there's somewhere. it's that's been on the radar for so long. I don't think there's anything there anymore. Oh, you don't? There's a giant warehouse. Is there? There's a giant warehouse full of crap, like an Indiana Jones, where a bunch of crates with a bunch of numbers that don't mean anything. You know. There might so be some... They've lost the record. Their inventory control is non-existent, and it's just sitting there waiting, and nobody can find it. Nobody even knows to look for it. You know, unless yeah. you, you know, I would I love to go down there and spend a year and just <laughs> open there shit. Was a, there was a <laughs> news thing where they went in there and looked around at the base and looked for tunnels and stuff where people said there was like hidden things on the base. They didn't find anything. They're not going to let them see the real It's shit. such an obvious place to look now. It's like, it's, yeah. it would be somewhere else where nobody even knows what the basic exists or it's some sort of weird nothing base that nobody thinks Probably. anything about. Yeah. Well, they were involved early on, but you're right. Maybe they moved yeah, somewhere every, everything, obscure. It would be, yeah, like maybe they moved everything to Florida where Nixon and Jackie Gleason saw it. And then it would have been moved somewhere else. It would be some, you know, little dinky base with storage facility, you know, high security storage facility at some base that nobody knows about. There was, um, yeah, it might, you know, it'd be like a mini base with a, you know, really good warehouse and guards and the whole thing. And then nothing, no signs or anything. You just have to know it was there to even find it. That's the type of place where they would heard, store this stuff. Yeah, I heard there's a new Area 51 style base in the Midwest somewhere. They they were tired of people, you know, getting <laughs> close to the Nevada one, which is, you know, humanity is getting closer and closer to that and more curious. But there yeah. was some other base. They said, I, I, I forget, I'll run across the article eventually. Yeah. That they opened up that, that you know, that our top secret. You know, because really stuff flying in and out of there is kind of almost public now. Oh, at the uh, so, Groom, Groom at, Lake? Yeah, area too, at Groom Lake. So I, they put somewhere, because there's a lot of open land and crap, you know, in the Midwest. Um, the weather's not too forgiving, though. That's kind of curious if they well, do that. Uh, the, you know? There's a lot of places they could they could. Kansas. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. I mean, the, the Western states, like... 80% of the land in the Western States is, is federal land. So some crazy, yeah. some crazy number. So do we want to talk about the uh, cosmic conspiracy, six decades yeah, of government UFO cover-ups part five? Uh, absolutely. And this is, um, August 94 Omni, I think. Yeah. August 94 Omni. So what'd you think of this? Well, it's interesting because they have, they talk about that they have um, the space, they mentioned the Space Command. Now, I didn't know Space Command was around in 90. Is this, what's the new 94. space thing? It's Space Force. What's the new Space Force? Space Force. Space Force. I'm not sure. But they have Space Command, and I've, I, I guess I've heard is. about it, but I don't remember. Um, is that I, ICBM launch detection systems? Yeah. So, I, I um, that they had. And that we had satellites that 
that they could see infrared, yep. you know, that they could, they tracked all the scud missiles that flew in desert storm and were able to track every one of them. And they're designed to pick up, you know, um, uh, bolt, uh, nuclear, nuclear missiles, you know, flying and that kind of thing for early detection. Yeah. Um, the satellites picked up every 70, there were, uh, there were 70 scud missiles in Iraq and they, um, they had very low intensity, uh, infrared sources, but they say that they could also see, should be able to also see UFOs, but they would gather data on those. And you've probably seen them in person, those computer yeah. re reels. I have, but you it's know, been a long I, don't time. Even, I don't know how they even would, I guess they just record information and then it's just, it's a tape. It. It's just a tape. I mean, it's just, it's like a cassette or anything or an eight, not an eight track, eight track cassette or um, reel to reel. It's just a real high speed, yeah. real, real tape player. That's all it is. Well, I just, I, I just think about the, remember the time tunnel and they had their office at the time, tunnel, well, underground facility. Yeah. And they always had those and they, spinning tape. They, things. Yeah. they had that computer. The computer was always this giant box, looked like a refrigerator, refrigerator with a couple of reel to reels on it. Well, I worked at you a, know, they, I worked at a company as a security guard when I was in college and uh, they had a um, computer room and it was all that stuff. These old, actually, I think at that point they were um, massive, the massive hard drives where the, um, you had the, you had the platen disc. They didn't have the reel to reels, but they had the, the hard drives for this company where it was an engineering company it was um, big platens. So the computer guy, We'd have to carry these big platters and load them onto the, the yeah, thing on our cart. Yeah, and, well, and, and load them into the onto a, a the reader for the for the computer and stuff. Because usually they, when I was there, there was nobody there. But every once in a while, the the one of the operators would be there. So one of my things I was supposed to go in and look in there for some reason. I don't know why I needed to. I guess I was supposed to make sure that it wasn't burning down. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Nobody was stealing anything, any you know, sensitive information. But what I found interesting in this this article is that it uh, uh, they're saying that the tapes are rewritten over. So the original tapes are written over. So these these investigators, what they did is that they opened up some of these files after the the Cold War ended, and these investigators that are looking at these signatures and some of these files are working from printouts. They're not working from the original data. So it's like, can you imagine it's the stacks and stacks of printouts? Yeah. Oh, and then the space, um, Air Force Space Command was founded September 1, 1982. And um, I don't know. And it changed to what we have now. I mean, yeah, I guess now it is Space Operations Command, which started so in the Space 20, Force 21 October 2020. And then there's Space Force, right? Isn't that the name thing? Is that what it's called? What space is it? Space Force, it's yeah. It's not the Air Force. It's the Space Force. Yes. It's the United States Space Force. Uh, 20 December 2019 is it founded. And then it has the Star Trek symbol for their um, their symbol, which people are going, ask. they stole the Star Trek symbol. Well, it's, actually, it's the other way around. Um, uh, but yeah. yeah, space operations command used to be air force space command and it's now it's space operations command. Well, they also had a, in the article they had where an Imperial Iranian air force F4, um, got off a star sidewinder aim 19 air to air missile at the target before it's, it got a lock systems failed, but it got a lock, yeah, it got, got radar lock. And then and it's, uh, the. The missile could see it, and then the electronics went down. So, since the electronics went, doesn't it have its own? Oh well, it would have. It had the missile the, fail too. The plane's electronics went down, so he couldn't fire it. This has been reported. Oh, he before. aimed. Oh, he aimed at it. Yeah, he was. He was he moving in. Get, he didn't get it off. Moving in, he got a lock, and then his electronics crashed on the jet. Wow. So, which is well, it gave off enough infrared energy for the Sidewinder IR sensor to lock on it. So, so yeah, they're, um, they're saying that this. If... <coughs> so the tie-in is that you know the IR could 
uh, it had enough IR for it to target that. So it, they're thinking that it could target the UAPs, but that, you know, the information was there, but, you know, it, you have to wade through. I mean, if they had to wade through and find it, you know, from over the years it might be difficult, right? I think I swallowed a bug. <clears throat> Man. Uh-oh. So, yeah, they uh, was able to get a lock on it. And the, uh, the, so what they're saying is that because the, the missile could get a lock, satellite should be able to see the UFOs. Right. This that's the tie in. I mean, yeah. Four, yeah, they're talking about the 14 inch reels of magnetic tape <laughs> that you always see yeah. spinning around with big yeah. movies. And I was like looking at that and I'm going, but they said that they, they, um, the tapes are eventually erased and reused. So what are they working from? And then they then later on it says a stacks of printouts from the DSP system computers. So I don't know the type of data they're looking at, but they're basically they're suggesting that these satellites do have the ability to see these anomalous UAPs, UFOs. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, well, that's yeah. what NASA I think is looking at. They're looking at their sat satellite data. I don't know if they're able to look at the. Um, classified stuff well it's like where are they coming from and where are they going to it's an easy you know it's like we can't track them they're going too fast or we have to have a method to track them i mean i think that's what we're kind of getting I now they're hanging their hat on we're worried <laughs> now that they're going to be a navigation hazard for aircraft i mean that's what they're that is i um, guess i think that's know. more of an excuse to to investigate yeah. this stuff. There's like, okay, we need a rationale to investigate yeah. the thing that everybody says you're a, a crazy person if you're interested in. And that it's actually a good rash, rationale because it's like a uh, navigation hazard or if it it's obviously, I don't think, or they haven't told us of any, um, you know, aircraft that crashing due to UFOs. No, but I do have a book that I think talks about UFOs attacking a couple of them about UFO attack stuff. So that's that may come back in the future when you get to look at that stuff to see what's going on. I mean, everything is not on the um, the internet. Sometimes you get a dig. Sometimes you need to read yeah. something yeah. other than the internet. You got to find a book. Well, we I found some interesting book. things. Um, like uh, Maher talking about his experience with Men in Black. He right. wrote that up in his book in an old article. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. And then you also had um, the guy that we will talk about more that um, was the first guy to write about, um, I think, UFOs and the Aztec crashes. Whoops. Uh, Scully behind the Flying Saucers. Yeah, and I mean they they're in the books, and sometimes they don't translate. And they, you get, yeah, you're right. You got to read the book. Or yeah, you're not. I mean, there's a lot of copyright restrictions, but we're there's fortunate that there's also a lot of this stuff people have been able to post online. Although I should say, like the Omni articles, the Omni magazines were on the Internet Archive. Most of them are gone now. I think somebody filed. Yeah, I think somebody filed a because um, apparently Copy. the stuff is is still copyrighted somebody said you can't have this up there anymore so but i have um, i have the important articles important pdfs i was able to get before it disappeared but i was shocked to see most of them are gone at this point yeah well there's you know for the same reason that we can't find roswell anymore uh, there is. information <laughs> uh who knows um i mean the more that i i look into this and i have a feeling i'll i'll continue to I'm feeling that there is something going on with Roswell and there was a heavy government involvement, but we'll see. I mean, there's two, 300 page reports from the air force saying why Roswell was a, um, not a real thing and a book by, um, by the Smithsonian. So that felt they need to, you know, really push, their legitimacy, really push, the, <laughs> push the uh, fact that it's well, just no, a conspiracy. It's the Smithsonian it's said it was fake, so it's fake. That well, why are we even talking about this? Yeah, Smithsonian says it's not true. Um, <laughs> I did read a um, what was supposedly an anti-UFO book 
by, put out by a guy. It was published by the Smithsonian. It wasn't bad. I mean, it was critical, but it was, um, wasn't bad. I wouldn't say that it was a hit piece. It was a, a reasonable analysis. Oh, really? So we'll see. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was really interesting too. I talked about that earlier, but this is, um, um, good stuff. Yeah. They, awesome. so people in the 1980s, people were trying to look at some of this, uh, infrared data that was released to um to see if there was data on ufos people haven't seen anything we haven't heard anything about that subsequently although there was a guy joe stafula uh on a billboard said that there was an event that had happened and was documented for nine minutes of something unusual coming in through the atmosphere they said there was a 300 page report written on it that was partially unclassified but nobody's seen it i haven't i didn't see anything when i did a quick search on goggle and uh, they called them fast walkers yeah and then our favorite uh ufo skeptic and debunker philip class uh, was saying that this was probably the sr-71 high altitude blackbird but i mean glass says everything everybody's out to make a buck everyone's hallucinating and you know shut up that's his, that's his, uh, <laughs> his, his story. His take. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think I've, I'm, I'm talked out. Yeah. We, uh, I mean, we're at an had, hour. <laughs> we're at, and, yeah, and we're I, actually at three hours and uh, yeah, wait, it's wait, way wait, too long. Three hours and 22 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and I, uh, Are you ready to wrap it up? Yeah. I'll wrap it up before I, I, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Alien Probe Podcast. <laughs> we welcome comments, questions, or requests to alienprobepodcast at gmail.com. Visit us at Facebook. Check out our website, alienprobe.net. I have to give a shout out to Kanani, our latest top listener and um, YouTube watcher. Got her uh, mouse pad uh, signed, and she uh, excited. Excited, she has actually seen a uh, an actual flying saucer down. I believe it's in New Mexico. So, thank you, Kanani. We appreciate all the support. You didn't sign my mouse pad. <laughs> I'll get the next one. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Alien Pro Pod. See us, subscribe, and like. Smash that like button at YouTube, at Alien Probe Podcast, and Doug Anthony, and you will bring us right to the top. Thanks to our uh, what might be our traveling senior producer, Robert Anthony, doing some UFO research. Uh, Overseas. In the, in, the, in, the, <laughs> in the Far East. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening and watching. We appreciate it. And watch the skies, everybody. Watch the skies.